All right. <clears throat> good morning. Good morning from Western Australia. It is Monday, the 4th December 2023. I'm your friend Roberto, and I want to make clear to people that eventually, you know, go online and see me for the first time. I am not a pastor. I am not, uh, you know, a denomination of believer. I'm not a prophet. I'm not an apostle. <laughs> I'm just a believer, a King James Bible believer, and I'm saved by grace through faith, having simply believed and received a glorious gospel of the cross. And I'm here as a friend reading commenting the scriptures with one desire that those who have not yet received salvation as a free gift from the scripture from the lord and his words can be saved and sealed by grace and those who are already saved and sealed can be edified and encouraged in the work of faith we know from the book of first timothy in chapter 2 3 and 4 that uh, the will of god in this dispensation of grace he will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth so it's not a question that i'm here trying to get proselytes or come to my church this and that no 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 i'm here to preach and teach in a way that you might receive the glorious gospel of Christ and be saved and you as a believer might be encouraged like I get encouraged in studying the word the word of truth now as you can see here I got the his sword program but particularly I got the King James Bible why because I personally believe I'm convinced 100 percent that we find the pure words of God here in this Bible, in the King James Bible. So I would, I can have, uh, like everybody else on the program, so many versions, free and paid, but I don't for a simple reason. I believe that God preserved this word we're going to read here. At the same time, try to understand, I don't debate. In other words, if you don't believe that, that's your choice okay I don't agree with your choice in that case but doesn't mean that I hate you you're my enemy or I will try to brainwash you no 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 God doesn't doesn't push himself on anybody uh, believers shouldn't do the same you know there is no point of trying to convince anybody the Holy Spirit is the one who speaks to the heart of the man who believes the word. All right. Let's give glory to God and start this Psalm 12. Psalm 12 written to the chief musician upon Sheminith, a son of David. Okay, so this is introduction. Help, Lord. So the psalmist is crying out for help. Help, Lord, for the godly man ceases, for the faithful fail from among the children of men. I need to make a specification. In the scriptures, King James, we find two programs. A prophetic program, which is 95% of this book, and the mystery program, which is the rest. The mystery program are the letters of Paul, Romans to Philemon. 13 letters, all the way from Romans to Philemon. The rest is prophetic, except the book of Acts is, you know, a transitional book. The prophetic has been known from the beginning and has been growing with the new books added. The mystery which is the letters of Paul, 
the mystery revealed in the letters of Paul has been hid in God for ages and generations, but now it's been revealed to the children of man, thanks to the ministry of the Apostle Paul, which will be actually the minister of Christ, the heavenly ministry. So Christ has got two ministries, a prophetical earthly one and deals with Israel, the nation of Israel, and that will be time past and ages to come. So the, the Bible thing seen as a, a timeline, very simple. Time past, but now ages to come. Yesterday, today, future, forever. Okay. We are here in the prophetic, so this is not written to and about the body of Christ. But as the apostle, by inspiration of the Holy Ghost, said, Whatever is written at four time is written for our learning. So we learn something very, very important in the prophetic. In this case, we learn that David was crying out to God because evidently the situation in the, in the country that was Israel was so bad. And he says, the godly man sees us for the faithful fail from among the children of men. But that also is a reality even now and will be uh, in the restoration in the time of the great tribulation in the seven years called Jacob's um, you know, prophetic, you know, uh, Jacob's trouble, you know, prophetic week of years. Because the, the Bible tells us the all of sin and come short to the glory of God. So everybody is a sinner, everybody is ungodly. And the majority don't even know this, or don't want to know or reject the truth. The fact is, he was crying because evidently this was the situation. And remember that the King David was not only the king of Israel, defined by the scripture, the friend of God, but he was a prophet. So here is prophetically talking of what happened at that time and possibly is standing through the course of time. The condition of mankind is die straight, as you say in English, you know, my English is not perfect. It's really, it's really problematic. Help, Lord, for the godly man sees us, for the faithful from among the children of men fail, you know, fail means you know, there. And this is the mirror of the situation then. Can you imagine this has been written, I would say, rather the seventh century before the first coming of Christ. So it's more than uh, 2,700 years uh, from us. But evidently, this is the situation of the heart of man. Then, now, in the reality is, unless people become part of the body of Christ and the, the people of God. There is no hope, really. They speak vanity. Everyone with his neighbor. With flattening lips and with a humble heart do they speak. And that's what happens all the time. They speak vanity. Vanity? You know, it's vain, it's pointless, it's not profitable, it's useless, and it's also offensive. They speak vanity. Everyone with his neighbor. Terrible condition, you know. Mankind so lost. Also, with flattering lips. There is all this desire to praise and glorify and exalt the flesh, the flesh of man, you know, people exalting each other. In reality, the only one who is exalted and should be praised and worshipped, that's the Lord. But, you know, for those people who don't believe or don't, they are not part of the, the saved, they don't want to worship and praise and exalt the Lord. 
Nowadays, we are in 2023, there is a war in, between Russia and Ukraine, there is a war in the Middle East, Israel, Hamas, and Palestine, and what we see that notwithstanding people want to uh, call themselves evolved <laughs> the, the beast nature you know the satanic nature of mankind is still there i understand self-defense but i really cringe to the thought that we most of the time see that we kill each other we are uh, we kill we destroy for greed, for possession, for control, for dominance. And happens not only in war, happens also in life. There's another spirit of cooperation, growing together in the knowledge of the Lord and helping each other in Christ, in the love of God. There is a desire to impose opposition on other people, like, you know, we become manipulators of people and thoughts and ideas. Wow. Paul said that we stand by faith. Each believer saved and sealed by grace stands by faith. By faith he stands. And that they, Paul, Silvanus, Timotheus, Barnabas, the servants of the Lord were there as helpers of your joy in the Lord, of your joy in Christ, not dominators of your faith. But that was then. Now, with all this plethora, never-ending of denominations, you see just the opposite. You see there is a, a desire to control, to dominate, and kind of, you know, take advantage of people and their resources. And that's what religion does. That's why I don't define myself a Christian denomination or Christian in particular, but a simple member of the new creature, which is the body of Christ. In my flesh, a sinner, an ungodly sinner, enemy of God. I was born like that in Adam. Until I heard the word of truth, the gospel of my salvation, or your salvation, or the salvation of people, which is the gospel of Christ, the gospel of the cross. I heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation is written in Ephesians 1.13. After I believed, I received, I was sealed, with all the spirit of promise, which is the earnest, the guarantee of our inheritance, of our inheritance, until the redemption of the first possession, unto the praise of his glory. So, the salvation and the sealing is an operation of God. When I simply believed, and that was, practically speaking, only 10 years ago, I mean, 2000 and 12, so 20, 11 years ago, I didn't feel anything. I just rejoiced because finally, after a life of religion, I saw the word of truth rightly divided, inspired, preserved in this King James Bible and the teaching of the Apostle Paul. I saw Christ as the, the head of the body, my Lord, my Savior, my Redeemer, thanks to the operation of God, not only He died on that cross for my sins, so for our sins, you know, according to the Scriptures, He was also buried, and He rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. And Paul said in Romans 4, said in Romans 4.25, that Christ was delivered for our offenses, it was risen again for our justification. Our salvation is a free gift of God. We don't have any part in it. We can't save ourselves or help God to save us. 
We simply believe and receive the salvation that is as provided by the cross of Christ and his glorious resurrection. And from, from that moment on, our eyes open and we start to see the world as really is. A present evil world where Satan, the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. And we were also children of disobedience, children of wrath. Where Satan, prince of the power of the earth, works now in the children of disobedience, blinding them to the glorious gospel of Christ. He's, he's ready to give you any religion, Christian religion, as much as you like. You want to be Catholic, Methodist, Presbyterian, Episcopalian, Pentecostal, Word of Faith, uh, Charismatic, Baptist, uh, did I repeat that? Uh, Joe Witness, Mormon, Church of Nazarene, Church of Christ. Go for it! But stay away from the Apostle Paul and the pure words of God, the King James Bible. Use any other Bible. There are 2,000 Bibles there. 2,000 perverted Bibles. And there are four, 300 main denominations and 4,000 4, plus pieces. You can, you can find these kind of things on Google. <laughs> but God is not like that he's not doing a lot of things that people say he's doing he's doing what is written in his word dispensationally we are in the dispensation of the grace of God since Acts 9 really when the Lord saved and sealed and commissioned Solo Tarsus, which becomes Paul, and made of him the apostle, preacher, teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. So I'm here to read what is written and allow this word to tell us as it is. They speak vanity, everyone with his neighbor, with flattering lips. And with a double heart do they speak. They call themselves with names like uh, professor, uh, you know, pastor, preacher, uh, pastor, apostle, anointed apostles nowadays, uh, gifted with the gift of healing, the gift of prophecy, the gift of this and that. And they go behind those pulpits, behind in the denominations, and 99.9.9 .9 .9 of the times they preach another Jesus, another spirit, another gospel. They stuck in dispensations of the of the past. They preach the gospel and the kingdom of the kingdom, like Jesus is building the kingdom now, which anybody should verify from the scripture is not. Or they go into the future, we are in the Great Tribulation or, or uh, Alpha Way and it's already happening and times. They just cannot see, as I didn't see for a lifetime, because I'm 75 almost. For more than 60 years I've been in total blindness, convinced that I was, oh yeah, right, you know in my denomination of beliefs using corrupt Bibles. So I am grateful to the Lord and his servants, the Apostle Paul in this case, for the word of truth that makes you really free because Jesus in his earthly ministry said, you shall not. He was talking to Israel, to his earthly people. Ye shall know, in this case also to his disciples, the twelve, ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. But this is true also now because once you come to know the Lord according to the revelation of the mystery, according to the dispensation of grace, according to the revelation of the mystery that Christ gave to Paul for us, we come to know the truth, and the truth makes us free from all this confusion that is out there 
not only in the religious world, but also in the political. But the reality was is important is religion because religion is absolutely devilish. We need the simplicity and the power of the gospel of Christ. And we need to stay with the word, align up with the word, not with ideas, opinions, interpretations. It's written clearly, they speak vanity, everyone with his neighbor. With flattering lips and with a double heart do they speak. What does it mean, double heart? Double, divided. They're not sincere, they're hypocrites. They, I don't know, they got agendas. Well, yeah. But there's going to be a reaction from the Lord. And this, practically, you will see. It's very much also into the future. Because at the moment, God is not intervening in the affairs of man because he's dispensing grace. As I said before, he will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. If he intervenes like that, we get all destroyed, I tell you now. Start with me in the flesh. You know what I mean? None of us is good at all, not even a little bit. <laughs> Which doesn't mean that you cannot believe the gospel. Actually, you got that freedom. That's the great thing that God leaves you free to believe or not believe. Because I told you before, he can't force you. He will never force you anyway. But life sometimes forces you because you see how terrible, horrible the situation is. The Lord shall cut off all flattering lips. So stop, you know. And the tongue that speak proud things. Pride. The sin of the, of the enemy, of Satan, you know. That's terrible because... Once, once you really come to know the Lord, you want to be anything but proud. You, you are a grasshopper, you know, scripture in, in Isaiah 40 says, the Lord looks from heaven down to the children of men. You know, we are grasshoppers. You, from on high, you can't even, only God can see. I mean, even you, if you go on a plane, I mean, you look down, you don't see people, you, you barely see buildings. Depends on the height, but the point is, we are so full of ourselves, it's not a joke. <laughs> it's terrible. We are little. God is immense, the Almighty God. He desires you believe and receive the operation of God, what Christ has done, so He can save you and seal you and make of you a child of God in Christ, a member of the body of Christ, not of the denomination run by pastor this and pastor that. They continue debating him. No, 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 no. The Lord shall cut off all flattering lips, which is the enemy anyway. And the tongue that speak proud things. That's the destiny of Satan and his minions. Who said who has said, with our tongue, we will prevail. Our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? Ah, oh, you know, this is like, uh, reminds me of Pharaoh, you know, Pharaoh. Who is the Lord? When Moses said, you know, the Lord, of, the God of Israel wants us, you know, and he said, who is the Lord? I don't know the Lord. <laughs> That's what sin does. You go on, no fellowship with God. You're out of the garden. Our lips are on. <laughs> when Moses said to God, oh, you know, I can't talk properly. And, you know, I'm paraphrasing. And look, I'm stammering, you know, send somebody else. He was afraid, you know, to accept this great call that he had from God to go and, and free, deliver the, the, the children of Israel, the sons of God, you know, he's uh, my son. You know. They all say, Moses, <laughs> who made the mouth? <laughs> we speak, 
not only because we have a mouth, but the entire system is built by God. God is a great creator and gave us procreation. Mankind now can procreate. We don't create, we procreate because God has given this capacity, this ability to our bodies. But everything belongs to the world in heaven, in earth, and under the earth. He owns everything, you know. And these people who said without tongue we will prevail. Yeah, that's also in religion. We can create. What do you want to create? Without words. These religious people, you know. I know I was one of them for a lifetime. You can't create anything. Cool, cool off, cool down. How do you say? Give glory to God. He's the creator. He created and made. He created and made. It's full of it. The scriptures. And people don't even believe that this God who created the heaven and the earth. They go on with this big bang, evolution, monkeys, this idiocy. From a biblical point of view, as I said, you might think you are a professor. But the scripture tells the professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. <laughs> Who said, with a tongue we will prevail, our lips are own, who is Lord over us. And then, verse 5, for the oppression of the poor, for the sighing of the needy, now will I rise as the Lord, I will set him in safety from him that puffs at him. So God is going to intervene. After this dispensation of grace comes to an end, it's going to be the last seven years for the wrath of God in the Jacob's trouble week of years, according to Daniel 9, for the book of Revelation. The world will know when Christ comes the second time there was a foolish thing to reject grace and the gospel of Christ. You don't want to be there. You want to believe now and be saved, okay? The words of the Lord are pure words. There you go. The words of the Lord are pure words. Every word of God is pure. And these people that say, I'm a believer, they go to churches, they say, oh, no, this has been modified, they change, added. They don't believe it. They don't believe that God was able to preserve his words. So their God is not the real God, because he is Sarah. He says here, the words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. See what happened between 1611 to 1769 with the King James that we have now here. The words of the Lord, L-O-R-D, this is the name of God in the Old Testament, are pure words as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. So this is a promise that God, of course, has kept. Kept. When I grow up, I speak English. I don't know what I speak now. Because God is faithful. Every word that came out from his mouth is eternally guaranteed. The word of God is settled in heaven. And we have the book. We have a copy here. Of what is several in heaven, no mention of even the fact that Christ is the word with a capital W seven times, that then it gets incarnated. He comes from heaven, he, he fulfills his mission, he dies on that cross, he gets buried, he rises again the third day to justify the believers, and he goes back where he came from to heaven. The right hand of the Father, thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. That's why little nothing me has got this wonderful Bible here on my computer in the year 2023. And then it says, the wicked walk on every side. 
when the values mana are exalted. This is our period. Outside of the body of Christ, that's what happens. Now, let get me right. The body of Christ is a new creature. We're not born again. It's a new creature. It didn't exist in the prophetic program. It was not even mentioned. It, no, even once. It was a mystery hidden God. We preach the Lord Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. Romans 16, 25 and 26. Outside of Christ, the wicked walk on every side when the vile men are exalted. I want to encourage you to believe and receive the glorious gospel of grace of God, which is how the Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. He was delivered for our transgressions and was risen again for our justification. Christ is made unto us sanctification, redemption, righteousness, wisdom. Christ, the true God and the true man, the God man, the man from heaven, the Lord. The Lord of glory, the blessed God, the immortal King, the immortal King, the only wise God, Jesus Christ died on the cross to save a good for nothing like me and you. And God, the sinners, enemies of God, children of wrath and disobedience. No more. Once you believe and receive this gospel, that's really glorious. He saves you, he seals you with the Holy Spirit of promise. You are now a member in particular of the one body of which he is the head. We are members one of another and flesh of his flesh, bones of his bones. The church, this term terminology, you know, this word, is not a building, it's not an organization, it's the body of Christ. And the Lord wants to save you. Your part is to believe. That's it. Which is, that's it. You receive what God does. And you give glory to the Lord and Him alone. That's it. Have a nice day. Thank you very much for listening.